The Buddha says that wherever we go, we go with craving as our companion. In other words, there's this constant dialogue inside. Something in the mind says, I want this. Something in the mind says, I don't like that. And you get into conversation with those voices, and they pull you in line with their views. Of course, they're really good at making themselves seem like they really belong to you, that you are the one who wants these things or doesn't want these things. It's a very insidious companion, because often they can get you to do things that you really know you shouldn't do. And then when the punishment comes, they go running away. It's like friends who try to get you to do something you know is wrong, and then when the police come, they go running off and they leave you with the evidence. So you realize that these are not good friends. You've got to find a better friend inside. So take the breath as your friend. Suppose you can get a massage that not only worked on you from the outside, but also worked on you from the inside, from the inside the blood vessels, inside the nerves. Well, that's precisely what the breath can do. You can breathe all the way through the body. Think of the breath energy running down the nerves, running down the blood vessels, any place where there's a blockage. A tight spot. Think of it relaxing, opening up. And that changes the way you feel the body from within. And if you want to have conversations, have conversations with the breath. You can say, how about going here? How about going there? How about being long, being short? See what it does for you. And you find that the breath is a really good friend when you get to know it. So there are times when you're left to yourself. I had a student one time I was asked to give meditation instructions to a group of people. And one of the people in the group was a brain surgeon. And I found out later that soon after the series of courses, basically it was, a series of classes, he discovered that he had cancer in the brain, and so he had to undergo an operation. And as he said, the fact that he had his breath with him when he, when he came out of the operation, all that time we had to just lie very still. He could stay with the breath and could do all kinds of things in his body with the breath. That was his companion. So this is one of those companions that stick with you through thick and thin. When you die, it will leave you, but in the meantime you can get a lot of use out of it. And as you get use out of it, you learn a lot about not only the breath but also about your own mind, because the breath is like a mirror for the mind. You can see the way you think. You can see the way you evaluate things. You can see the perceptions that you use, labeling this as this and that's that. It's all reflected in the breath. And so by the time the breath leaves you, you will have learned a lot about your own mind. And those lessons will stand you in good stead. So even though it won't stay with you forever, it does give you good parting gifts. So it's a really good kind of friend. It's with you when everybody else abandons you. It can teach you lessons about yourself so you understand yourself better. As the Buddha said, the reason we suffer so much in life is because we don't understand our own minds. But if you can gain some more understanding about your own mind, that's probably one of the best gifts that anyone can give you. Because then you can act and speak and think about things and not suffer. And that's, those are really good lessons to learn.